Hi, I'm Jess Rieger Davis, and I'm a watercolor artist and teaching artist from Wheeling, West Virginia. I also paint the natural world in watercolor. In this little class, I'm going to teach you uh, some basic brush strokes and techniques to paint a monarch butterfly, and I will also cover basic supplies to get you started. So let's dive in. As far as supplies go in watercolor, uh, there are a few basic things we need. The first is paper. So as long as you're using watercolor paper, you can use hot press, cold press, um, you know, that's really up to your preference. Uh, today I'm using hot press, but this is 140 pound watercolor paper, so it's going to hold the paint and water really well. It's gonna sit on top and let us move that paint around uh, without sinking too much into the paper. We also need watercolors. So this is a nice little uh, Winsor & Newton set and this came pre-filled with color, so all of these colors came ready to go. You'll also need brushes. And today I'm just using a size 4 and 10 round brush, so think large, medium, small, somewhere in between. I also have a toothbrush. Um, I like using toothbrushes to splatter paint onto paper, and we'll do some of that later. You may also need an eraser and some pencils. You'll also need uh, a vessel for water and some paper towels to dry off your brush. And lastly, I have some white gouache and we'll be using that as well today. If you don't have white gouache, you could always use white acrylic paint and water it down a little bit. Um, but I'll talk about that more when we start painting. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with some of our basic brush strokes and techniques. And just a few. That way we can get started as like a little warm-up painting. So the first thing you need to do is wet your brush. And you can choose any color on your palette. So you're just going to gently swipe that brush against your paint. And you'll swipe that directly onto your paper. So this is called wet on dry. Essentially wet paint on dry paper. If you hear a scrapey sound or if you see white paper through your paint, try adding a little bit more water. For our next technique, we're going to wet the surface of our paper with clean water. And then we're going to drop color into that wet area. And you can use either brush or any brush that you have on hand for this. I'll switch back and forth a bit. I also want you to kind of play around and practice using your brush as a pencil. So using the point of your brush, drawing with that brush. You can also utilize the entire bristle, you know, not just the point. We can also use the belly of the brush create bigger brush strokes. And again, you can practice with any brush that you have. Larger brushes, you'll get larger lines. Smaller brushes, you'll get smaller, thinner lines. Another technique that we'll use today is dropping in color. So this is very similar to uh, wet into wet painting, except you're going to start off with color on your paper. And while this color is still wet, we're going to add a new color. So we'll literally drop that right in. And the nice thing is these colors are going to mix and move on their own. So that's one of the properties of watercolor. Wherever there's water, paint will go. So this yellow is going to move all throughout that blue. Another technique we'll be using is negative painting. So negative painting is essentially painting around an object. So let's just say we have a circle We'll do a couple circles. 
And normally these would be sketched out on your paper first. But say I want to leave the inside of those circles white, I'm going to paint around those circles. So essentially, the inside of the circle will stay white while I paint the outside. Our last technique that we're going to do is called softening. So softening is when you want to soften an area of color. And we're going to do that by cleaning out our brush. And while the brush is still damp and clean, we're going to pull that color across the paper and soften that edge. So now we have this nice little transition from dark to light. In watercolor we have soft and hard edges. So if you want your edges to be soft or if you want them to maybe disappear a little bit this is the key to achieving that. Taking that brush with a little bit of water, touching the edge that you want to soften, and just pull that color away. So there are more techniques, but these are the ones we'll be using in our painting today. So in this section, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we're going to get our image onto paper. So this is our butterfly we'll be painting today. And this is actually just a sketch um, from my sketchbook. So we can sketch freehanded, meaning we can use this image as our guide and sketch directly onto our watercolor paper. When I sketch, I look at basic shapes. And I'm also keeping this sketch very light. And again, simple shapes. And this is just my guide, so I'm keeping it light. I don't want to see all these pencil lines through my painting. So I'm just blocking in the basic, you know, these basic shapes that I see. What's nice about this image, a lot of these shapes within our butterfly, um, they're kind of long and cylindrical, almost like puzzle pieces. So if you're sketching this freehand, it doesn't have to look exactly like this. I am going to sketch out some of the um, white dots. but some of those I'll end up adding with my white gouache, we'll use that later. So this is my sketched version. Again, nice and light, um, very airy. 
We have a lot of room to be able to erase any dark lines, and then as we add paint, these lines will disappear because they are nice and light. If you're not a fan of sketching, or if you're not comfortable with sketching, um, I'm gonna provide reference photos for you so you can use these uh, exact images. But once you have this image, if you print it out, turn that image to the back so we don't see it anymore. You can use your pencil to rub some of that graphite and pencil lead on the back. So this is just a plain sketching pencil. A number two pencil will work just as well. Once you've covered the back of the paper where your image is, you can line that up onto your watercolor paper, wherever you want this to go. I'll just do it in this bottom corner. So once you have it uh, laid out on your paper where you want it, you can actually trace this reference. So a few tips, it's really important to keep that paper down. You don't wanna lift it up too often and take a peek. Uh, it is kind of tricky to get your spot again. You don't have to push too hard, but you want to apply enough pressure, you know, to the pencil so you know you're transferring your image. Once you're finished, you can lift that paper up. Do a couple of these little circles. And once you remove your paper, you'll have a very, very light transfer of that butterfly. If you've missed anything, you can always come back in and add those lines. And you can always add extra once you're finished. But this way, it's a very nice light transfer. And we can paint directly on top of this and these lines will also disappear. So there are two options for you to get your image on paper. So this is the painting section. So to get started with our painting, we do wanna work light to dark, even though some of these areas on our butterfly are very dark. We don't wanna start out so dark that we can't layer or kind of add some dimension. So I'm gonna work with my smaller brush to get started. Another thing I'm going to do is work on the brightest colors, you know, the lighter areas first. So all of my orange, uh, I'm gonna start with those areas instead of the kind of blackish blue color. So if you're not confident with color mixing, you can set your palette next to your reference photo and pick out the colors that you see. So if you need to line your palette up, you can pick out the colors you see. We know that red and yellow makes orange. And I'm gonna use Payne's Gray for my dark areas. 
We can also make different variations of orange, light orange, dark orange, reddish orange, yellowish orange. So it doesn't have to just be one shade. We can play around and mix a little bit. So now that I have my colors, I'm going to dive right in and start painting. So always remember you need water, no matter what, to make this paint move. So if your brush feels dry, apply a little extra water. And I'm gonna play around with some of that wet into wet technique as well. And drop in some of my darker orange in a few areas. Just for fun. And it's okay if some of this mixes and bleeds together. We are going to be outlining a lot of this with Payne's Gray. I'm also using a nice amount of pigment because I want this area to be very bold and bright. And every so often, I'm just dropping in different variations of that reddish orange mix. And I'm just using my um, original painting as my guide. So that's what I'm referencing as far as color placement. And again, I'm letting some of those colors bleed together. This next part is optional, but I'm going to play a little. And I'm actually going to soften some of these colors and let them bleed into my background, similar uh, to my original painting. I like these uh, kind of streaks of color that make it look like this butterfly is moving. So I'm going to pick an area, touch some of that edge of the wet paint, and pull that color outward. You might get a lot of paint that moves like this, or maybe just a tiny bit. It depends on how wet or dry that original layer of paint is. might encourage some of that paint to move or even just add a little bit of fresh paint into some of my little butterfly scales. Just to get more color flow. Again, this is optional. You could always leave this step out and let your butterfly dry for a bit and move on to step two. So this is part of our first wash. 
We have to let this dry before we can move into anything else. Once this dries, we'll work on uh, these darker areas of our butterfly and then we'll add little bits of detail with some white gouache. So we're gonna pick up where we've left off and work on our second wash. So in this wash, I'm going to add a little bit more orange in some of the areas that it faded, and I'm going to work on those darker areas, um, kind of that border the wing. So I am going to keep using my smaller brush for this, just so I have a little bit more control. And essentially, I'm just adding a little extra color where I feel like I've lost some of that bold orange. And I won't add this to every little scale. I'm just kind of picking and choosing. Like I said, this is just hit and miss. Just adding little pops of color where some of that orange faded into my background. So I know these areas are still wet, but they're dry enough in most places that I can work on my Payne's Gray on the edges of that wing. So this is where it gets a little tricky. I know monarch butterflies have that really black, bold uh, kind of band on their wings, but I'm going to keep that color relatively light. I don't want to go in too dark and not be able to add interest and depth here and there. That and I also just want a light, airy painting. And every so often I'll be adding water to my brush to help move that paint around. And you'll start to see some of my colors bleeding together. I'm okay with that. I'm going to let that happen. If you don't want this to happen, you want your orange to dry before you come in with any darker new color. So essentially, I'm just negative painting. I'm trying to negative paint some of these little circles that I've added, but some of them I will use that white gouache and just add them in later. And I'm going to repeat that step earlier, um, that softening step where I pull some of that color into my background. So I'm just touching the wet areas of paint and letting that color move. So this is where it's gonna get a little tricky, painting some of these finer lines uh, in between our butterfly scales. But if you just take your time and gently add some of those marks, it'll come together really well. All right. I'm just going to keep working my way around this wing. And again, I'm still working relatively light with this color. I really don't want a very, very dark band on the edges of my butterfly.
So every so often when I feel my brush drying out, I am gonna add a little extra water. Cause I want that brush to glide across the paper. And again, a little bit of softening here. Some of these lines that faded, I might just add little hints of dark around them. Just to make them pop a little bit more. And I'm going to repeat this step on that lower wing. If you lose some of these little circles that you're trying to negative paint, don't panic. We can add some of those back into our painting later. So I'm barely applying any pressure. As I paint these fine lines. And again, I'm going to soften some of that color into the background. And when we're softening, we're pushing that paint away from your reference, you know, or from your image. Um, we want that paint to go to the outer edges. So it really is kind of a pushing and pulling brush stroke. I'm going to add a couple more lines. just add a little more detail to some of these. And the body is very long and kind of cylindrical. So I've lost some of his body, but when that dries, I'll come back in and touch that area up. To paint these very thin antenna, 
I'm going to get some of my Payne's Gray on my brush. I'm going to dab it off a little bit onto my paper towel just to get the excess water off that brush. And then I'm going to ever so gently draw those lines. And you can see I didn't follow my sketch, but that's okay. We can erase those lines later. So I'm just gonna touch a few areas with a little extra Payne's Gray. Just where I think that paint can really make the painting pop. I'm gonna soften some of this color into the rest of the wing. just pull some of that color away as well. So we'll let this dry. Um, we're going to add a couple white dots around the edges of that wing just to brighten them up. And add a little bit of orange up here. I noticed I missed that in my first reference. And again, I'm just going into a couple areas where I feel that the wing disappeared a little too much. And I'm adding a little extra paint. Not a whole lot though. I just want to redefine that wing. While we're waiting for this to dry, um, in this reference I splattered some paint, so I'm going to show you how to do that. We can use a toothbrush or a paintbrush. If you're going to use the paintbrush, I would use your smaller brush, add a little bit of color, and tap the brush that has paint on it against another brush, and kind of Get that brush close to your paper, wherever you want the splatter to go. That's how you'll get the most controlled splatter. You can also use a toothbrush just by wetting it, kind of daubing off the excess water. Dip that toothbrush into your paint, and your fingers will get a little messy, but you can flick that splatter on as well. And again, you want to get close to your paper. Um, wherever you want that splatter to go, you're trying to aim the splatter in that direction. So now that our edges have dried, um, where our Payne's Gray is, I'm going to go in with some of my white gouache so this is just in a tube, and I'm going to add a little bit to my palette. Uh, gouache is similar to watercolor. It is water soluble. Uh, it's a little more opaque, so it's going to show up better on our painting. So I'm going to add some of that to my brush. And I'm just going to start dotting this throughout my butterfly, wherever I feel like I've lost some of those white dots that I really want to uh, kind of make them pop in this piece. And really there's no rhyme or reason at this stage. I'm just applying some bright white to the areas that I feel could use some pop of color. I'm going to add some to the body as well, because monarch butterflies usually have a little bit of white on their bodies.
And I'm even going over some of the areas that I've negative painted, just to brighten some of those shapes as well. And I think just for fun, we'll see what happens. I might splatter a little bit of white here and there. Just in a few places. So at this stage, we're pretty much done. There are just a few things I want to touch up. I lost his body shape a little bit, so I'm just going to add that back into my painting. And I might add a little bit more paint on those antenna. And I might just soften some of these areas where my paint's gray bled into my orange. At this stage, we could add more, we could go darker, but I'm actually really happy with the finished product. Um, I like the colors, I like the way it's kind of fading into the background, so we are calling this done for today. We could add more, but I think it's good. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see your paintings.